under workload application dependency discovery. We're going to start getting into segmentation, but in order to do segmentation properly, we really need to understand how the application communicates. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define a workspace and a workspace is really a container for defining and analyzing and enforcing policies for a particular application. It's really an isolated environment that allows us to experiment without actually impacting other applications. So we'll go ahead and give this a name and we'll select the pod or sorry, the scope in our case, pod 101 open cart. And we'll go ahead and create that. And that's just going to define the assets that we're going to leverage within that scope. Now, before we jump into the ADM or application dependency mapping tool, let's go back to inventory search. We'll look at that scope and let's just have a look to see some of the elements that we have here. And so we can see load balancer. We've got web server one and two and workstation, a couple IP addresses. Um, we also call out the operating system here as well. So let's go back to our workspace and we'll go ahead and click on open cart. It is our primary active workspace. You can have others. Only one can be primary. And now that we're in here, we can select a time range. So we've got flow data coming in or data coming from either the sensors or agents. We can also have flow data coming in from other devices. We can pick a time range by just clicking or we can select it or we can just drag the bar across here. We're going to look at about two days of information. This side information, we're going to go ahead and import a, um, a file that's going to provide additional information. This is around server load balancing configuration and we'll have a look at that in a second. So let's go ahead and upload that file. Now, since we've uploaded, now we've got two here. We're going to get rid of the previous one and we're going to make sure that we're going to select the latest one that we've just imported. We're also going to look at cluster granularity. So this is going to, you know, put our web servers together, database servers, application servers, so like systems. And we're going to be very fine there. Port generalization is around how sensitive the port range should be. Um, and then we've got policy compression. So, uh, you know, compiling um, policy, if you have AD443, make one rule as opposed to um, two separate rules. Now let's just jump back into and, uh, to that JSON file that we just imported. We can see that we've got some information here. We've got actually a load balancer, open cart config. We've got the VIP, the VIP port, protocol backend, um, with some IP addresses and it took roughly two minutes for this to run against two days of data and now we've got all this good information around um, policies or potential policies. Now we're going to review this with not only the application teams but also with our security teams and we're going to come to a determination of what or whether or not these policies make sense and make any adjustments that we may need to do but at least the the bulk of it's been done based on the flow data and how it communicates. We jumped into clusters and here we've got an example of a cluster and we've got three systems that were added here. And so if we come back in, what we've noticed is, is we've got this load balancer that's actually assigned to this workload. Now we could leave it there, but in our case, we're going to remove it and we're going to clean this up a little bit. So this is just showing you that just out of the box, it does a pretty good job of identifying and a load balancer is providing web services. Now in my case, I'm gonna make web servers be the web server itself and have the load balancer called load balancer. So let's go ahead and make that adjustment. We got rid of that IP address. Now the query is based on those other two IP addresses. If we pivot in, now we can just see those two web servers. Now we could create additional um, uh, groups as needed. We can click that create cluster. We went ahead and checked that. And when we went, when we check it, what happens here is, is that when ADM runs again, it doesn't try to recreate the clusters. So a good practice would be come in once you validate and approve them. Um, so you don't have to run that again. Now everything's looking good here. 
at least for our use case. Again, if we go back and look at that, um, the tagged information that we provided earlier, we can see that um, that there is the you know a correlation obviously here, and you can see neighbors of those workloads. So in this case, web servers got some relationships with the database and the workstation itself. Pretty cool. Within a few minutes, we know what's going on.